Hey fellow plant eaters, my name is Marina. Welcome back to my channel. Remember to subscribe, duh. And don't forget to hydrate. Today I'm here to hit you with some facts. Lots of you probably already know that veganism really, really impacts the environment, but you don't exactly know how. Well, I have done that research for you. Let's just start off with the bare bones basic. What exactly is global warming? What is climate change? Everyone's freaking out about it. The president doesn't think it exists. <laughs> Basically, the concept of global warming is that gases are always being emitted into the atmosphere by many different kinds of fumes and cars and animals and etc, etc, etc. And then those fumes are supposed to be reabsorbed by the plants. But when there are not enough plants to absorb all the fumes and the carbon dioxide, the atmosphere acts as a blanket and traps that back in and therefore affects our climate. Livestock raised for farming and meat production accounts for about 14.5% of greenhouse gas emissions released into our atmosphere, which is equal to, if not a little bit more, than the amount of greenhouse gases that are released from transportation, which includes planes, trains, cars, boats, etc. That's shocking. That is huge, you guys. Also, that being said, there the animals' methane, aka their farts, are 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. <laughs> Another comparison we have is one serving of beef is equivalent to the environment as driving three miles in your car. Now that's going to equal about 330 grams of carbon versus two grams of carbon for something like lentils. So what does this mean? This means if everyone moves toward veganism, we could solve 15% of our globe's global warming issues by 2050. 15%. I mean, that is direct action. That is something that you can personally do to help your environment. Now that would be equivalent to eliminating one billion cars. You might think to yourself, well, what can one person do? It's about the chain reaction. It's one person who tells their friends, who tells their friends, and is spiral. So if I do it, if you do it, if we all do it, then we can all work together to make our environment better for the future, for our kids. So moving on from transportation, 33 million kilometers of land are being used just to raise cattle. And then this is not including the land that we use to grow crop. If we eliminated all this space that's being used to graze for cattle and we turn the land into its natural grassland or forest habitat that it naturally grew as, the land would essentially restore itself and start being able to absorb CO2 again and therefore that would counter climate change. Beef accounts for 60% of deforestation to raise cattle. If we had all those forests back, those trees would be able to reabsorb all the gases that are being emitted. We can grow 375 pounds of meat on 1.5 acres of land, but we could grow 37 thousand pounds of vegetables which is nuts like think about how many more people we could feed by using just that little amount of land for using it for vegetables rather than for meat additionally it takes 1 billion tons of grain to feed livestock when with that we could be feeding 3 billion people instead now also the amount of water that we are using for livestock production is also a huge problem. 70% of our fresh water is used towards animal agriculture. It takes 15,000 liters to produce a kilogram of beef, and it takes 4,000 liters for a kilogram of chicken. Now this is compared to 300, just 300 liters for vegetables. Now here's a little perspective for you. If you go vegan, per day you can save 1,100 gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain, 30 square feet of forest, and 20 pounds pounds of CO2. We free up the land that is being used for animal agriculture, aka 40 million kilometers. We would have land the size of Africa if you combined it all together, and then only 20% of that land would be needed to feed 7 billion herbivores, aka everyone on the planet. 
Again, the rest of that land, the 80% rest of that land, would be used to be combating climate change. Now, I know that we talk about cattle and chicken a lot, but also we shouldn't be ignoring the problems that we are causing to our ocean and our ocean ecosystem by fishing. So up to 40% of the fishing that we do is actually bycatch. Bycatch is catching things accidentally, such as dolphins, sharks, turtles, the things that we don't want to be catching in the first place, but 40% is a huge amount of ecosystem that we are destroying. This is causing these animals to become endangered. Now this all harms our climate because these animals that we are taking out of ecosystems, such as sharks for one example, we don't want them to go extinct because these animals are consuming large amounts of carbon storing vegetation, but when that's gone and when even 1% of that carbon storing vegetation is lost, 460 million tons of carbon are being released back into our ecosystem. And again, because comparing it to transportation is easy, that's equivalent to 97 million cars. Additionally, as far as our oceans go, overfishing harms marine life by really interrupting the food chain. So when populations of predatory species are being diminished and are going extinct, because we're catching them by accident. Other species begin to overpopulate because, you know, the natural food chain has been disrupted and then this disrupts and destroys biodiversity and then the whole ecosystem is destroyed. I tried to make this as simple and concise as possible in words and examples that are easy to understand because it's something that I am really passionate about and I think that people should know. So if you learned some new information in this video, make sure to leave a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next Saturday. Bye. Save the fishies.